we have Medusa, the newest album from Paradise Lost, which, well, Paradise Lost have fallen a bit by the wayside recent albums wise for me. I know you actually caught up with them in the last couple of months. Yeah, very recently. Uh, but from my perspective, it feels like a bit of a callback to some of their earlier stuff. It does seem very much like they're going back to more of the kind of Doom Death style they had earlier on in their career. But fusing it with some of their newer stuff. Yeah, and honestly, it's a really good combination. It, I'm actually really quite impressed with this album. Yeah, I wasn't sure what to expect, because, um, again, haven't come across a Paradise Lost album that I've not enjoyed. Um, not too into... Well, correction, haven't come across trying to think of how to word this. Um, aside from the first two albums, I've enjoyed all their stuff. Um, Shades of God and Icon, I find myself very tepid on, because... Shades of God, I'm not a huge fan of. Icon has a few songs I like, but it doesn't really stick with me that much. Mm. From um, Draconian times onwards, I'm pretty much a fan of their work. Although they, I did kind of skip over them a little bit in that middle part where they were doing kind of synth pop star stuff. Mm. I, um, I'm trying to think. When was it that they were doing more synth poppy? I can't remember. Ah, uh, trying to remember when exactly they went that name of the album. Some of the old guy in the front. Uh, one with the old guy on the front. Something. Something second to them, I can't remember the name of anything. One second? One second, I think that was it, yeah. Yeah, one second, to began, began to experiment with Depeche Mode style and Synth Pop. Um, I love Depeche Mode, so... I like Depeche Mode as well, it just it didn't quite work for me with Paradise Lost trying to be Depeche Mode. Mm. The thing is, songs from that are the ones that introduced me to Paradise Lost, so... That's well. I mean, they've got some of that other kind of stuff going on later on. Mm. If you look at um, Symbol of Life, for example, has that kind of thing mixed in with more kind of metal star. Yeah. I really like that album, so... Yeah. I mean, of course, that whole album is just a really powerful album, so... Yeah. Uh, I actually completely forgot about Faith Devises Death of the Night Us. I actually haven't heard that album. Mm -hmm. That's the only album between Symbol of Life and Medusa that I haven't heard, though. <laughs> but I think I've heard pretty much everything they put out, apart from that album, though. Fair dues. Um... I haven't heard the last two albums they released properly. I, I've heard songs from them, but I haven't sat down and listened to them. That's fair. It seems to be what they're doing is, as of, um, well, from Tragic Idol onwards, they seem to be going back towards more the heavier metal styles. Mm. And of course, that culminates here with Medusa, which is very much, very much a heavy metal album. Yeah. There's a lot of... A lot of doom metal influence, kind of slow, plodding riffs yeah. and drums, combined with death growling and occasional clean vocals. Mm. And that's my kind of deal. So this album is pretty damn fine. Yeah. I mean, Nick Holmes, he, for a good chunk of the albums, he's been more doing the clean vocals. Whereas on this album, it's mostly the growling. Yeah, I'll say it's probably more growling than there is clean vocals here, which is interesting considering how many albums they've been through over the last couple of decades where they haven't been doing any growling at all. Yeah. We still got the kind of iconic clean vocals you can hear, which is very much recognisable as his voice. But quite from just layering it with the growling, which is rather good. Mm. I'm going to make sure it actually eases. Is it the same vocalist doing the vocals of both? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. No, it actually is him doing both the growls and the clean vocals. I just wanted to double check on that. Hmm. Yeah, there's the only backing vocal... Well, you've got Heather McIntosh doing backing vocals on um, track six, and Steve Crowbar doing backing vocals on track two. Hmm. Interestingly enough, actually, that uh, the most recent tour was with Paul Bearer and Sinistro. Now, Sinistro is an artist that me and Dan saw supporting Alcest and Mono. Huh. And they are, they're pretty fine themselves, so it would be interesting. It would be an interesting tour to go to. Mm. I've seen Spinal Slots live, so I still haven't, especially if they're doing this kind of material. And yet, I've seen them live twice. Yeah. Uh, this is once again proof that Yorkshire has some good quality stuff coming out of it. Yeah. Like Yorkshire Puddings and Paradise Lost. 
Damn it, don't make me hungry. This is George Bruni's apparently about the pinnacle of food. Also another interesting thing to note about this album is that the first song is friggin' long for Paradise Lost. Yeah. They didn't usually go over, you know, six, seven minutes, if that. Mm. But no, the first song's full on eight and a half minutes long. Yeah, which is no complaints here, but it's sort of like, okay. That's longer than I'm used to from you guys. So it usually caps out around what, six minutes for a lot of that stuff, so. Um... I mean, I'm, most songs I'm used to being at most of, like, I'm just thinking. They usually do four or five minutes, the occasional six minutes on here and there on an album. Yeah. At least from the ones I've got, which is most of them. So. Yeah. I mean, the song length on this album, again, is all over the place, so. Hmm. Actually, as we were mentioning before we started actually recording this, that if you don't include the bonus tracks, it's actually a really short album. Hmm. Yeah, it's only 42 minutes. Yeah, but I don't, know, I don't know how available the bonus tracks are. I think quite a lot of bonus tracks, as they're called, in saying inverted comments that you can't actually see because they're not actually on video. But the bonus tracks are available on pretty much any release. So I don't know why they're called bonus tracks, really. Mm. Um, and we don't normally do this, but because of the fact that our opinions match up quite dramatically, we are going to actually cover the bonus tracks. Indeed. Because... In both our cases, one of our favourites... Is a bonus track. Yeah. Track 9, Shrines. Um, It's actually quite funny that that's one of our favourites, considering it's one of the shorter songs. Yeah. Well, I suppose it's condensed into a shorter form, with all the same amount of goodness as the rest of the song. Yeah. I've got no complaints here. It's just... It's funny that... I I think... Interesting. Hmm? Quintus, the limited edition Digipack version has shrines in symbolic virtue, but the Japanese version has frozen delusion. Mm. And, of course, in both our cases, we're not especially a fan of frozen illusion. It just seems very much like it's it goes nowhere. Yeah. I mean, I'm a fan of a kind of slow plodding metal, especially metal and a bit of funeral doom and stuff like that, but this just doesn't feel worthwhile. I suppose it. Although a lot of their most recent stuff has been sort of a callback. They've still been progressing with their sound and evolving and all that sort of thing. Frozen Illusion feels like a regression. Yeah, I'll probably agree with it. I mean, I can't think of anything else they've put out that actually doesn't... Is this uninteresting. Mm. <laughs> Even kind of the weaker parts of Icon or Shades of God or the very early stuff sounds more interesting than this particular drum song does. Yeah. Maybe that's why it's a bonus track, though. <laughs> mm. it, it's one of those cases of... It is deservedly a bonus track because it feels very fillery, which is why it's unfortunate that it's the last song. Technically, if you include all the the album in its entirety, supposedly, although our track listing is different, I don't get it, but supposedly it's meant to be the last track. Yeah, but hey, it's one of the cases where if it, this is the last track, you can stop listening to it before that track. Yeah. Um... If you don't have a special edition for whatever reason, I'd advise going and just finding a video or download or something for Shrines because it is very much worth having. Yeah, Shrines is kind of one of the songs that epitomises that nice mixing of different eras of Paradise Lost because you've got some of the... um, What's the album that uh, Fade or Fader is from? That's... Believe in nothing. No, all the bees in it. Uh, oh god, I don't know why I'm why I'm asking and not. <laughs> you have just as much stuff as I do. Yeah. Well, not quite. Pretty much. Mm. Um. But yeah, it. Some of it feels a bit like a callback to Believe in Nothing, just in terms of vocal arrangements, that sort of thing. But also, sort of more recent stuff. I don't know. The song makes me think of something. I think it's the drum pattern makes me think of something in particular, but I can't place it, it doesn't like me. Mm. Well, very much like the drumming in this song as well. The drawing Yeah. Uh, since doing um, Forest Seasons, I've been really paying attention to sort of how the drumming is in a lot of heavier music, because it's sort of a, okay, is this too much drumming or is it just the right amount? Just the right amount. Mm. Um... I'd say, now, 
if we take it as just um, the Digipack version, you know, Frozen Illusion we're not including because that's the Japanese exclusive. Um, Symbolic Virtue is a really great closer. It is, yeah, it's a good, good finisher. Mm. I think, mm, thinking about it, I wouldn't really change anything else around here, actually. No, I... The Symbolic Virtue makes a good finisher and Fear the Sky makes a damn solid opener, so... Yeah. I, I think the progression is really great. The instrumentation is solid. Basically, the only complaint either of us really have is Frozen Illusion. Well, that's a bonus track, so it doesn't entirely count. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what rating would you give it? Oh, 4.25, I go with. Then we're doing 2.25, but you can have it. So yeah. I'm going to go with that. Because... <laughs> Whilst I'm more inclined to Paradise Lost's more uh, goth metal phases as opposed to their doom metal, I do think that this is a really solid album and it's a very accessible album for those who aren't quite that inclined towards doom metal. Hmm. It's kind of it does feel very much like kind of if you don't necessarily like a kind of more slow plodding metal or growls, then this album's probably not going to convert you. Mm. But if you're fine with that kind of thing, and maybe you think, mm, I, I like the kind of slow doom metal thing, but I want you know, a little bit faster sometimes, and maybe a bit of a bit more gothic in places, maybe, then this album is probably going to sell you, I reckon. Yeah, I mean, I, I always find myself, like some bands like uh, Candlemass, I really like Candlemass, and they're, they're generally regarded as sort of one of the granddaddies of doom metal, so... Um... It does feel a bit candlemassy in places, not overtly so, but occasionally you'll sort of like you'll hear bits. But yeah, overall, this is an impressive album for a band that's been releasing it. music for like bloody how long? I don't know, like twenty five years or something too long. I remember, I think it was it's like ninety three or something like that. Or somewhere around there anyway. Um, eighty eight. Ah, that's actually older than I thought it was. The first studio album was nineteen ninety. Yeah, well, that is. Pretty standard for bands. Still 27 years, yeah. That's pretty long. And yet they come out of this thing which manages to you know, take elements from the very early part of their career and make it recent and make it good. Mm. A lot of bands try and do that, kind of revisit the old days and they usually mess it up, it feels. Yeah. But no, it seems, I don't know, from what I... They've changed their style a lot over the years as well, so going back to this is interesting. And they kind of started it with probably in Requiem, that's where they started getting a bit heavier again. And then Tragic Idol developed it further, played within, brought back a bit of growling, and now we're here. We're kind of going full circle back to where they started, I guess. <laughs> I wouldn't so much say full circle, because every time they've released a new album, they've brought something from a previous album in. I feel like a spiral then, I guess, kind of spiralling outwards, getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> Yeah. Pretty much what I was saying, actually, because they're basically, not, they're basically going round and round in circles, but they're not retreading, so... Yeah. Anyway, next album... We're 